Uh, hi, in this uh, short video, continuing on our uh, 11ax and Wi-Fi 6 topics, I want to give a little bit of an insight into uh, downlink multi-user transmissions and some idea of how the scheduling happens in such a case. My name is uh, Srikant and I am with NanoCell Networks. So quick uh, recap on the PPDU format and the reason why uh, we talk about the PPDU format is that downlink multi-user scheduling happens as a part of the phi header okay and that of course implies that we'll have to look into the PPDU and the specific field which will give information about the schedule is this HE high efficiency sig B um, and that will be present only when the PPDU is of downlink multi-user type and remember there are three possibilities we have uh, OFDMA um, we have multi-user MIMO and the combination okay you can just say plus okay for all three of these cases we have HE sig B uh, giving all information about the schedules okay and HE sig A which is always present in every uh, 11ax PPDU uh, will also clarify whether it is a what we call full bandwidth MU MIMO or there is some OFDMA involved either only OFDMA or the plus option. Okay. So in a nutshell SIGB is the most important one. SIGA just has some clues for certain uh, types. Now SIGB is also interestingly constructed. Um, there are SIGB content channels as they are called and each content channel typically uh, will have information related to a specific 20 megahertz portion. Remember that we can have a 20, 40, 80 and even 160 megahertz PPDUs. But the scheduling and if you look at the scheduling especially for OFDMA, if it is a full bandwidth MU MIMO, uh, then we are only looking at the entire bandwidth as a whole. We don't have any division in the frequency space. But whenever OFDMA is involved, we start zooming in on 20 megahertz part and then we give information in corresponding SIGB uh, messages. And so here's a, a representative uh, idea for a 40 megahertz case where each 20 megahertz part has its SIGB uh, which talks about the OFDMA related schedule information on that specific 20 megahertz. Okay? So as an example you can see that uh, there's a field called common and user specific field and the user specific field specifically tells hey this is for some user one maybe for two and three and with all the details and whereas this sig b a message contains all the information pertaining to this 20 megahertz part split okay so the first idea is that sig b attacks the bandwidth problem by looking at it in 20 megahertz pieces and conveying information about the schedule for each 20 megahertz piece the next part which I've already alluded to is it has the structure of a common information and then user specific information. Uh, the user specific information is probably the, the details of the schedule, uh, which user gets what, what MCS, etc. Um, users are referred to by using their association ID, not by their MAC addresses as far as a CB schedule is concerned. So in a certain sense, association ID becomes very, very important in 11AX from a scheduling perspective. So you will see both on downlink, which is what we are talking about today, and on the uplink, uh, AID is what is used to convey schedule related information for DL and UL MU. Okay. So what is the need for this common information? The common information is present whenever OFDMA is involved. The only time it is absent is when there is full bandwidth MU MIMO where you know the entire bandwidth is just going to be used as a whole with MU MIMO kind of split amongst users. So the common information uh, helps us understand how we 20 megahertz bandwidth. So there are multiple possibilities as you can see you can split it with all 26 tones um, or you can have a complete 242 tones and in between you have all possible combinations of various RU or tone sizes which can be allocated to the user. So the common information is actually going in an 8-bit signal is going to actually tell which row because there's an index for each row which row are we addressing are we addressing this row for which there's a particular word are we going to address this row are we going to address this row and these rows are special because they are shaded and you see the, the reason why they are given certain special treatment is because they can combine MU MIMO which means that 
Uh, there is an OFDMA happening with, let's say, for example, 106, 26, and 106. But within the 106, you can also have multi-user MIMO as well. Okay. So that's why they're having a different color. So that those are the cases where you have the possibility of doing OFDMA plus MU MIMO. Since that's the most uh, sort of uh, advanced case, taking a quick look from the standard perspective, this is what the common information puts out. Some 8-bit information. And the 8-bit information kind of leads us to this split in terms of the bandwidth. So that's the OFDMA split. And because of these last three bits having this value, there are three users in the 106 tone. So that's where MU-MIMO is happening. And so in the user-specific inf information, we'll first have information for first three users and then this and this and this and this and this in an ordered fashion with a specific length of bits for each user's scheduling information. So which station can infer everything that they need to know about their schedule. Remember that they are going to be referred to by their association IDs, uh, MCS information, all details will be given for each user. Okay. So I hope that gives us uh, some insight into the downlink multi-user scheduling. Um, and with that, we will stop for today. So for more information, please take a look at our website and we'll be back with more videos. Thank you.